Hello everyone and welcome to KIN 3303 Motor Learning and Control for the Summer 2 Semester of 2022. I hope I got that all right. So first off, I'm the instructor of the course. My name is Jared. You're welcome to just call me by my first name. If that's too informal for you, then you're welcome to call me Dr. Blinch. And my, I guess, official title here at Texas Tech is Assistant Professor Blinch. But just Jared is fine. So this is just a little joke about how the syllabus has tons of information in it and it's really the best place to learn about exactly how this course will work. So I'm not going to go over that information today because it's in the syllabus and it's probably just most efficient to read it. Uh, you don't have to read it, you know, word for word, all the pages, but the first couple pages talk about the course format and then it's kind of all the the legal stuff that's the same in, in every course after that. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, two things that are not in the syllabus. First, I want to talk to you about past student performance in KIN 3303, so you can get somewhat of an idea uh, what to expect. And the second one, I just want to give you a heads up about how the online tests on Blackboard uh, will work. So first, past student performance. Now this course, every time I teach it, is a little bit different. So we're not going to compare it to every time I've taught it. But if we look at the just previous semester, summer 1, 2022, where it was very similar, um, you can see how the 45 students who took the class uh, did. And what we're looking at here are the test scores in percent for the 14 modules uh, that are in the class. And this will be the same for uh, this semester. So you can see on the very first module, you know, great score, 90%. Next module, you know, still pretty high, you know, 80 something. And then you kind of dropped a little bit here from, from modules three and four, maybe stabilized, and then actually got a little better here uh, later on. So what's happening with this trend? Well, what I think is the first couple modules are fairly straightforward. This is the first, you know, motor behavior course you've taken. Well, unless you've taken lifespan motor development that also falls within motor behavior. So we're starting out with really kind of fundamentals. So the first two modules aren't as difficult. Once you get into, you know, the third, fourth, fifth modules, you know, that difficulty will kind of persist through uh, the rest of the course. The module topics, uh, sometimes we do two modules in a row of the same topic. Other times we'll switch topics between modules. And you might personally enjoy one topic more than another. You might find one topic easier than the other. But after the first few modules, I think the difficulty is, is fairly um, consistent through the rest of the modules. Now, why did it peak here? Well, I think this is because I started to contact students and say, hey, you know, I see you're not doing so well, and you know, you're going to need to do better to pass the course. And I think that motivated some people to, to get their test scores higher, which, which was great. Now here is sort of a histogram of the, the grade distribution, final grades from last semester. And unfortunately, I didn't have any students who earned an A+. That'd be great if, if all of y'all, or <laughs> at least one of you did that this semester. So we have you know several students with A's. I guess the majority of students uh, in the class uh, achieved a B. We have a good number of students with C's. And then we did have four students who, unfortunately, will have to uh, retake the course. Now this semester, one thing I'm going to do is after five modules, um, so that will take us through the first two weeks of the course, I'll reach out to anyone whose average on those five modules is below 70% to check in with you and maybe offer some suggestions on what you can do to improve your grade. A, one, another reason I'll do that after five modules is because there's still another nine modules left and there's still time, if you haven't done well in the first five modules, to do better on the next nine modules and you know, still pass the course or, or at least raise your grade significantly. If you're struggling with the course, you, know, you really don't want to wait until 10 modules have gone by to, to get some help or to try something different because at that point, you know, there's only four modules left and each module is equally weighted. So most of your grade will be decided after 10 modules. One other comment on past student performance. 
this course, uh, in some ways, I think it's fairly straightforward, and maybe that's not fair to say because this is, you know, my life's work is studying uh, motor learning and control. Uh, but it is an introductory course. You know, this is your first time studying motor control and motor learning. Um, even if you've studied motor development, you know, this is a little bit different. This course, I think, throws some students because it's a little different than the typical physiology course in kinesiology. So in physiology, everything you talk about, you can see. You know, if we're talking about the heart, the lungs, you know, those are physical things that we can see. We might talk about small things like um, how the muscles work, you know, the sliding filaments, but we can look at diagrams that depict what those look like on a, a microscopic level. With motor learning, we talk about cognitive processes, things like uh, memory or perception. Uh, we'll talk a lot about information processing. And those are really theoretical constructs. We can't actually see them. Um, so I'll show you diagrams where we say, okay, this is how memory works, this is how information processing works. But that's not an, like a microscopic view of what's happening in the brain. We focus more on the mind. This is a bit of a different focus for most kinesiology. Now, if you've already taken exercise and sports psychology, this approach will be fairly similar. So that uh, background might help. What I wanted to say here though, is if this different approach is a struggle for you, what you might need to do are try different learning strategies. So in physiology, maybe certain active learning strategies work very well for you. Well, they may or may not work in this class. And if you wanna brush up on active learning and the study cycle, I actually have a, a 30 minute presentation on that, you know, just a tiny kind of crash course really, but there are several recommended ways to study, which these are all based on, on science and research. So they've, um, they're, they're shown to be a fairly optimal way to learn information. So if you are struggling, I mean, feel free, reach out to me. Uh, we can definitely talk about strategies, get you connected with resources, uh, but feel free if you want, you can also check out uh, my YouTube video on active learning. So the link is in the slides, but I'll also put that in the description of the YouTube video. All right, that's our first half of today's class. The second half, I wanna talk a little bit about online tests on Blackboard. So each module um, culminates with a test that you do online on Blackboard. If you've taken online classes before, you may be very experienced with that, uh, which is great. But if this is new to you, there's a few caveats I wanna point out mostly related to technical difficulties that can arise. And hopefully these tips will minimize the chance of you experiencing technical difficulties. Uh, but if you do, and you know, it may not be your fault, these things just kind of happen. You know, we can't control our Wi-Fi connections all the time. Uh, I'll also tell you what to do if it does happen so that uh, we can, can fix the problem. So you'll be doing your online tests uh, on Blackboard and the course syllabus gives more of the, the details around that, due dates, time limits, things like that. But we're gonna talk about uh, some technical difficulties that might arise. So Blackboard, when you're taking your test, it requires a constant internet connection between you and your computer. And if you lose your internet connection, even for a moment, what Blackboard says is, oh, they're gone, I guess they're done their test, and it gets submitted automatically for you. So let's say you're doing a test and your computer crashes. When you restart your computer, if you go back into Blackboard and you try to take the test again, it will probably say, uh, you know, you've already taken this test. You know, it, it won't uh, let you take it again. Or other things that can happen, maybe more subtle than that, is let's say you're doing your test and your Wi-Fi connection goes down, even for a second, you might not even realize then you get to your end of your test, and you try to submit it, uh, and it might not let you. Uh, and that's again because when Blackboard detects the internet connection has, has stopped, even for a moment, it automatically submits your test. So uh, a few things to do about this, or to prevent this from happening. First of all, a wired internet connection is more reliable than a wireless connection. So if possible, uh, when doing your test, if you can be on a computer with a wired internet connection, that uh, would be best. When you look at the course content, you know if you wanna do that on a tablet, a cell phone, 
um, you know, mostly watching YouTube presentations like this, you know, that's completely fine. You know, YouTube won't crash if your internet goes down for a second. The other one is using a desktop, a laptop, uh, is better than using a, a mobile device because mobile devices are even more finicky with their internet connections. Some students I know do test on their mobile device and it should work most of the time, but it's easier to lose the internet connection there. Also, if you are using you know, a cell phone, it's best, uh, even though it's a mobile device, not to be mobile while doing your test. So if you try to take your test you know, driving in a car on a road trip, um, and you go from one internet zone to another, you know, that might kill your test and Blackboard will say, oh, it's been submitted. Uh, and, you know, please don't try to take your test uh, on a cell phone while flying in an airplane, you know, it probably won't work out. So whichever device you do use um, for your test or for even accessing the content on Blackboard, it's good to check that your browser is supported. Um, I have seen issues, even this last semester, a student said, oh, I open up the sample questions and then it says it's a read-only file, it won't, won't let me look at it. And what he found is when he switched to a supported browser, you know, that problem went away. And this is most critical for when you're doing your test. So what you can do is check that you're using a supported browser. There's a link here in the slides that you can go to. I'll put that in the YouTube description as well. And you can just click on that and it will tell you whether your browser is supported. Okay, so did something go wrong while taking a test? So we'll talk about what that might look like and, and how we can fix it. So a few, three common things I see. One, you open the test and it is automatically submitted. So you open it, you don't, you don't click submit, you don't get to answer any questions and for some reason it just submits, that can happen. Uh, the other thing is you complete the test and then you go to click the submit button and the submit button won't work. It's, you know, doesn't click, it doesn't do anything. And third, what can happen is, you know, you do the test, you click the submit button, uh, but when you do that, it says, hey, you have unanswered questions. And it might be true, if you, if you don't answer a question, it will warn you, but it is possible if you look and you're like, no, I've answered that and, and it won't accept it. These three things can happen when your internet connection is temporarily lost. Uh, and they can be very confusing to, to know that that, you know, has happened. So, what you should do here are uh, two things. So first of all, you wanna clear your browser's cache. When any of these things happen, your browser's cache can kind of get into a bad state. And even if I reset your test and you take it again, or you try to take the next test, you might encounter the same problem because your browser's cache is in a bad state. Um, so if you know how to clear your browser's cra uh, cache, <laughs> great, just go ahead and do that. If you need any support with that, you know, you can Google it, but you can also call Blackboard support. They are actually available 24 seven. I've called them in the middle of the night before and someone's picked up right away. So feel free to do that. If you want instead, you can email them. Uh, you usually find, you know, if, if you've got a test due in an hour, then, you know, don't send an email because they might not get to it for two hours, you know, give them a call. That's the best to get help right away. Second, uh, once you've cleared your cache, um, to retake your test, if you try to, Blackboard won't let you because you only get one attempt at each test. What I need to do is reset your test. So send me an email. Uh, that's the best way to get me um, in, in the quickest way. And tell me what happened. And then I can reset your test and you'll be able to start it again. Now it's not gonna save your answers and you will get a new random set of questions because all the tests come from a test bank. Um, but that's kind of the best we can do in this situation. It is possible that I can see a partially completed test online. And a few times last semester, when there was just one question that hadn't been answered when something went wrong, you know, I might send you an email and say, hey, answer this one question over email. I'll manually put it in so that you don't have to retake the entire test. So if something goes wrong, send me an email, let me know what happened. While you're waiting, clear your browser's cache, and then I should be able to reset your test and you can take it again. Now this is for technical difficulties. This is for when things go wrong that aren't you know, your fault or my fault, it's just you know, the internet's fault. <laughs> this is not for other, let's say, like personal difficulties. So I had one student once emailed me and said, hey, 
I started the test and I fell asleep. And it submitted itself automatically after an hour because the tests have a limit of an hour. It said, hey, can you reset the test for me so I can take it again? And I said, unfortunately, no, I cannot reset the test for you. Um, it, I guess you should treat the test the same way you're, if, as if you were taking it in class. And if a student falls asleep during a test uh, and they don't wake up and the test is due, then you know the test is unfortunately due. But if something weird happens, a technical difficulty, um, or you know, if there's a, a legitimate emergency in your life, you know, if you're taking a test and you go into labor and you have to go have a baby, <laughs> then of course let me know about that. Um, I, I can certainly make accommodations for those exceptional situations. Last thing about uh, online tests. So Blackboard, the official link is this top one here. This bottom one, it usually works, but there are times, uh, even for me, when I'll go to this link and the internet will say, hey, I can't find that, and then I try going to another website, my internet is fine, and it just seems to be that this link goes down from time to time. So make sure when you go to Blackboard, you're going to the ttu.blackboard.com, and if you ever get this and your internet isn't down, then, then maybe check that you went to the, the proper link. Okay, great. So those are the two topics I wanted to cover today. I'm looking forward to having a, a great course with everyone. If you have any questions at any time, feel free to contact me. Email is certainly uh, easiest. Um, my office phone number is in the syllabus. You can always try me there. And I will be on campus during uh, summer two on the, the Texas Tech campus. So I am actually also available to meet in person if you happen to be uh, in Lubbock as well. Um, besides in-person visits, we can also meet online, um, you know, via Zoom, Skype, uh, or, or any online meeting software. So as you proceed, if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to me. And again, the, the sooner we can help with any sort of issue, the better uh, chance that you will be able to reach your fullest potential in this course. So again, I'm looking forward to a great semester and I'll see you in our next module.